Dear guests, welcome back to our online summit here at Pebble and Fuchs. And now it's time to start our live lounge and that's the opportunity for you to ask questions. Just use the live chat. You can find the button on the lower right side. Just push it and ask whatever you like. So we got a first impression of smart intro logistics solutions in the keynote from Stefan Albrecht. And we now want to go more into detail. And we have two presentations in our live lounge. And the first is about a collaboration that became a strong partnership. And in the center of this, a solution that is pretty outstanding. You want to know more? Welcome, Benedikt Rauscher on stage. It's yours. Thank you. And welcome. Um, I'd like to introduce you to our live launch where we want to explain how customers become partners of Peppel and Fuchs. The first example is the development of a 2D LiDAR scanner as a customized solution for an interlogistic shuttle system. First of all, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Benedikt Rauscher. I'm an electrical engineer and I'm with Peppel and Fuchs since 2005, where I joined the company as an R&D leader for vision sensors. And since 2015, I'm working on global IoT and Industry 4.0 projects. And Industry 4.0, that's also the key word to our customer. Our customer is the company Montratec. Montratec is really convinced that Industry 4.0 needs also an intralogistic 4.0. Montratec is a company of about 150 employees located in uh, the nice Black Forest in the southwest of Germany in Niedereschach, uh, but has sales locations worldwide and is permanently developing innovative product like the, um, flexible, mon the flexible monorail system Montrac, which we will see in a short video now. On a monorail, very maneuverable, payload of 50 kilograms, Extremely low power consumption, space saving on ground and ceiling, and accurate positioning. Montrac's product launch was in 1996, and today it is produced in its fifth generation. And up to now, there are more than two and a half thousand Montrac systems installed worldwide. And Montratec is permanently working on improving the performance of the system, of this shuttle system. And let's have a look how this, this performance could be improved. Yeah, first of all, the speed. The speed has to be as fast as possible. And second, the distance between the shuttles have to be as short as possible, as close as possible they should move together. And to achieve this, uh, a distance sensor is needed, which is um, more mounted and at the head of the shuttle to measure the distance to a shuttle which is moving ahead. Uh, but such a sensor is not the only or the complete solution because, as you could see, the shuttles also move around curves. And the, sh the sensor, to detect reliably the uh, shuttle in front of itself, has to have to look around the corner, to say it simply. And because if the sensor is not able to look around that corner, the shuttle has to wait until the shuttle in front has left the curve area completely before it can enter the curve area, which costs performance, and that's not what uh, Montatec wanted to achieve. So the uh, uh, distance, a reliable distance sensor is needed to improve the performance and to, uh, to achieve several goals. Let's have a look at this. One goal is, of course, optimize the distance between the shuttles and to avoid stops before curves and to continuously control the speed uh, and adapting it to different load situations. If uh, the shuttle has to carry heavy or very big lo loads, it has to move uh, slower than with smaller loads and, and situations. And also the shuttle, the sensor has to detect obstructions 
to avoid collisions, which will cause to unplanned downtimes of the system, which is also should have to be avoided because it is a cost performance, of course. Yeah, and Pepper and Fuchs is a, an innovative sensor pioneer and has developed a very smart approach to measure distances, the PRT system. Let's, ha let's have a look at this technology in a short video. This measurement method uses a powerful light source to emit short, high-energy pulses that the target object reflects and a receiving element recaptures. The sensor uses the runtime of the light to calculate the exact distance to the target object. Thank you. Those smart technologies like PRT or time of flight principle qualify Pepper and Fuchs as an innovator in sensor technology. And Montatec, of course, is an innovator in interlogistic solutions. So let's see how these two innovators found together and became partners. In the intensive search for a sensor supplier to provide the distance sensor module for the fifth shuttle generation, Papel and Fuchs was actually the only company willing to customize its catalog product to the specific needs of Montratec and Montrac. And that was what motivated us to partner with Papel and Fuchs. An optical sensor was developed for Montratec based on pulse ranging technology. Uh, this sensor was specially optimized and adapted for the shuttle. You now, the FC, these two partners, let's have a look at the solution or at the base of the solution. This is a portfolio sensor, the R2100 from Pebble and Fuchs. It's a, a 2D scanner with uh, an, a scanning range of 88 degrees, seamless 2D distance measurement. The speciality of this sensor is that it doesn't contain any moving parts. The classical technology to uh, build up a scanner is to uh, take a single scan, a single uh, sensor, and to let it rotate with a motor, which uh, need, where a lot of mechanical parts are needed, and those uh, um, assemblies are not very well, very good for moving, the moving uh, vehicles like these shuttles and so on. So. This uh, R2100 technology is the base for this innovative solution, which was designed for Mondratec. Video, please. The R2100, as already said, contains um, 11 single PRT sensors, LED scanners, and a software. And uh, this. this um, technology without any moving parts and there is, they have to be fitted into uh, the special um, the special um, the, the sp special design of this Montratec sensor which is or the Montratec shuttle which is a bit uh, much different than the one uh, the, the, the shape of the, the sensor which of, of Pepper and Fuchs as you can see here the new sensor solution had to be uh, fitted and adapted to the special form factor of the, the Mondratec shuttle. Um, now, we have got this in this sensor, we have got not 11, but five PRT sensors, all also without any moving parts in there. And they measure the distance in all ambient conditions. And, uh, uh, also integrated is a crosstalk suppression that is needed to avoid interference from one uh, sensor to another one. That is, all, that is necessary for shuttles who are equipped with two sensors, one at the front and the other one at the rear side, uh, can move in both directions, three-directional shuttles. So they, for this uh, application, this, um, this back, uh, suppression is needed and the design is directly integrated into the shuttle's control loop and uh, of course also it was this so designed that it meets the customer's budget. So let's see how this product which is completely different from the original product is manufactured.
you see that we have got a perfect fit of the sensor into the shuttle. Now let's move to the next video, please. The semiconductor. You see in this video that the semicircular center housing required a complete redesign of the measurement electronics. It have to be, had to be changed from this shape to that shape. And Pepple and Fuchs built up a completely uh, new end product line at the facility in Berlin to produce this special uh, Montatec sensor. So now, last but not least, let's hear from the customer and the involved Pebble and Fuchs managers. To me, the partnership with Pebble and Fuchs felt like a very close collaboration because it was not simply a supplier-customer relationship. Especially as we delved deeper into the development project, the relationship became a true partnership and very open to the requirements of both companies. In my opinion, the collaboration was very much a partnership, almost a friendship. We have achieved our goals for the collaboration with Montratech in terms of time and technology. I have never before seen a project carried out like this one. There were ups and downs, as there are in any project. But the driving forces behind the project have hit the mark, in my opinion. My personal highlight was holding the fully developed sensor for the first time. I'm a technology specialist, through and through. When we installed this semi-finished sensor for the first time, and achieved the look, intricacy, and results we had been working on for months and years, it was a wonderful highlight. Montratech will invest a great deal in future generations, and I hope that we can work together again. And we are sure to find many aspects and technological requirements, especially regarding sensor technology, that will give us the opportunity to renew our collaboration with Papel and Fuchs. Well, thank you very much for this statement. And thank you very much, you, for your attention, for your attention, sorry. And this is uh, the end of my live launch presentation. And I will see if there are any questions. Well, thanks, Benedict. And Oliver. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we have to just have a side. Yeah, uh, okay. Maybe sorry, a little bit more to the yeah, of course. <laughs> This is quite difficult uh, yeah. in, in that small uh, area. Well, um, uh, actually, there are questions uh, concerning the um, um, some, some measurement, for example. How, how long is the measure range of, mm -hmm. of the sensor? Measuring range of the original Pebble and Fuchs portfolio sensor, the R2100, is 8 meters. 8 meters at, a de at 88 degrees. But that's far too much or much not needed for the, sh the shuttle application. Well, this sensor has an, a sensing range of 500 millimeters, half a meter, from 50 millimeters to half a meter. Yeah, which, which actually is, is enough for, uh, for the shuttles. It's absolutely enough for the shuttle application, yeah. How about the load um, uh, of the shuttles? What, what can they carry? The shuttles can carry up to 30 kilograms, one shuttle. Uh, that depends on if it is a, a single axis uh, driven or a double axis driven shuttle. The double axis uh, shuttles can carry about up to 30 kilograms and the single axis up to 10, 10 kilograms. And now is an important question, how fast how can fast? they carry them out? <laughs> <laughs> up to 30 uh, <laughs> meters per minute, oh, which is quick. quite fast. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we Half have a meter. quick transportation uh, built in with the LiDAR technology. Benedict, thanks a lot. And um, yeah, we'll make a little switch here on stage and uh, sw uh, swipe over to the next presentation, um, which is about a solution here in the House of Pebble and Fuchs as well. And actually, it's a collaboration. And um, well, let me give you a short picture. Uh, I think most of us played with, uh, for example, Lego or other building bricks uh, when they were young, or maybe they still do as adults. Well, ac actually said um, uh, psychologists that we adults play too little, but that's an <laughs> another story. So imagine you have uh, lots of bricks and a system that um, yeah, checks it uh, every time and tells you when and where to put which brick uh, in together. And then finally you have, for example, a car or a spaceship or maybe a house. And now imagine this in a bigger scale and you have finally a big house. Well, this, so to say, is the collaboration of Pebble and Fuchs and Fingerhouse. And to know more about that, let me introduce 
Neil Möst. Yeah. Thanks, Olli. Yeah, um, hello everybody. My name is Daniel Möst. Um, I'm working as a sales engineer in the department New Business Development here at Pebble and Fuchs for almost three years now. And um, yeah, I, I, today I'm really looking forward to present a project that will be of special interest um, uh, for you. Um, we installed an RFID turnkey solution at our customer Fingerhouse. And I'm really looking forward to present that project to you in the next 20 minutes. So first of all, of course, I would like to give you an introduction about the customer Fingerhouse. Uh, Fingerhouse is a German manufacturer of prefabricated homes in timber frame construction. And among other large manufacturers on the German market, it's actually one of the biggest. And to give you a feeling about the efficiency, the output of that company, they actually uh, manufacturing three houses every day. So every day, three houses are leaving the factory gate, um, get it uh, loaded on the truck and um, get assembled at the construction site. So pretty impressive numbers actually. And um, yeah, Fingerhouse is achieving that output uh, thanks to their 600 employees. And um, I'm really looking forward to give you an introduction about uh, the company in the following video. Yes. Um, let's have a look on the market environment and trends in the prefabricating housing industry. Um, while 15% of newly built detached or semi-detached houses in Germany were prefabricated houses in 2010. And this share has risen to 20% in 2020. And um, among several reasons, one of the biggest for that is, of course, a short time to house completion. So you need to imagine that from the conclusion of the contract, to the manufacturing at the site, to the assembly at the construction site, it usually only takes four to six months. And uh, yeah, let's dive in one market trend um, of this business. Um, as uh, with our customer Fingerhouse, more and more houses are being built in uh, so-called timber frame construction. Um, so as you can see on the picture on the, on the right side, and that means that individualized, customized housing modules from wood are um, manufactured under industrial conditions and uh, thus in high quality and then just need to be assembled at the um, construction site. What are the market-driven challenges now for Fingerhouse? Um, on the one hand, growing need for individuality. That means that nobody wants to buy or, uh, yeah, nobody, let's say nobody, wants to buy um, any house off the shelf, just off the shelf. But uh, everybody wants to have his own dream house, his own individualized home. And this is why um, Fingerhouse mainly um, is manufacturing customized home in, uh, homes in batch size one. And um, of course, that's great for, for, for the customer, um, but it's also really complex, high level of complexity for, for Fingerhouse. And to give you a little feeling about um, that portfo the, the portfolio of Fingerhouse, let's have a look in the following video. So as you saw, um, Fingerhouse is offering really a wide portfolio that really ranges from typical townhouses to really modern houses to even luxury homes. And on the other, on the other side, um, uh, Fingerhouse is challenged by a high demand and also deadline pressure from the market. And now, yeah, in order to reliably meet all these customer challenges, all these market challenges, uh, Fingerhouse needs to ensure transparency in its intralogistic processes. And uh, for this purpose, they defined three key success factors. On the one hand, Fingerhouse needs to be able to localize at any time where their house components are in their manufacturing. So 
um, at what workstation or are the components um, already at the dispatch area or are the components um, even already at the, at the um, uh, construction site, for example. But it's not enough for them just to know where their components are located, but also what current status do they have. For example, to be able um, to commission the transportation agency just in time. And it's also really important for them, uh, for Fingerhaus, at any time to know how efficient their current intralogistic processes are. So are there any bottlenecks? Are there any less utilized steps? And this is why Fingerhaus was looking for a partner on the market, supporting them with knowledge and resources to design and implement a solution. And, um, yeah, they don't want to have any kind of an isolated solution like the hardware or just the software or even just the concept, but they want to have a turnkey solution. And this is why they were contacting or get in contact with uh, Pebble and Fuchs. And um, I'm pretty sure that some of you are wondering now, why did they get in, in uh, touch in contact with Pebble and Fuchs? So I know Pebble and Fuchs for manufacturing great sensors. Um, I know them for manufacturing uh, great hardware. So but I don't know them actually for the manufacturing or for the providing of um, whole turnkey um, solutions. And this is true, so we are mainly known at the market for the manufacturing of great hardware for over 70 years now. But we also realize that more and more of our customers are faced more complex requirements. And uh, it's, for them it's often not enough just to get uh, provided with, with the hardware. And this is why we set up a five-step program helping our customer uh, to realize such, um, such turnkey projects. So, as you can see on the slides, starting with concept development, then, of course, the selection of the appropriate hardware. Um, we are even um, able to develop necessary software solutions. We can provide you with installation and commissioning, as well as after-sales services, like appropriate uh, staff um, training, for example, or um, technical support. And um, of course, we make suggestions to you as our customer. What do we think are the necessary steps for you to achieve your target? But at the end, you as our customer can decide for which of the steps you want to go for. And of course, as said, <laughs> in the case of Fingerhouse, um, they want to have the whole turnkey project. And this is why um, they were going for all of the five steps. So. This is why we started uh, together with Fingerhouse with concept development. That means that, um, first of all, we put together a team of internal experts. And these experts then were sitting together with the customer, were listening to his problems, to his challenges, his real needs. And um, they also, they even um, visited the customer's side to understand in detail what the, what the challenges are he's, he's dealing with. And um, according to that outcome, Together with the customer, they developed an appropriate solution concept. And one of the outcomes of that solution concept was to use RFID as the preferred identification technology in order to reliably meet the track and trace requirements of the customer. And uh, RFID stands for radio frequency identification, and it uses radio waves to automatically identify tagged objects or even tagged persons. And uh, yeah, due to the fact that um, the automotive industry is the main, um, is, is the main uh, customer for, for Pebble and Fuchs, uh, according to RFID. I would like to give you an insight about that technology at the example of the automotive industry. So please have a look in the following video. So as you can see, car bodies are running there through a production manufacturing process in the automotive industry. And the car bodies now are tagged with RFID transponders. And uh, the transponder can um, store information such as the production number, for example, or um, even the customer name, or even the, the future car color. And that um, information now uh, can be read by our RFID head. Okay, let's get back to the presentation. Well, um, now why um, did we uh, select um, RFID as our preferred identification technology? So we have other technologies in our portfolio, such as barcode technology, for example, or data metrics technology. And there are three reasons for that, actually. Um, on the one hand, of course, RFID enables data exchange over long range. That means at Pebble and Fuchs, up to six meter. Um, we also don't need any kind of a sideline. That even means that you could 
put the uh, tag, for example, into a box and it's still readable. And uh, RFID enables the storage of a larger amount of data and uh, these data also uh, can be changed as often as required. Okay, let's have a look on the hardware we installed at our uh, customer Fingerhouse. So first of all, we provided them with a large amount of these RFID labels, paper labels, which are um, adhesive, which are really robust and also really cost effective. We also installed a large amount of these RFID heads with a two meter operating distance. Um, we installed that, uh, them at uh, specific workstations and um, in many cases we installed them at the beginning and the end of the workstation to be able to also detect the real process time. In, um, yeah, in the uh, dispatch area or for the dispatch area, we installed our larger reading heads with a four meter operating distance because at that point we need to cover a larger area, a wider area. We also installed trigger sensors uh, that, uh, that are needed for the activation of our RFID head. And um, in that case, we mainly uh, installed ultrasonic um, sensors, but also proximity or photoelectric sensors. That totally depends on the, diff on the different um, requirements. Yeah, then all the sensors are plugged to our control interface unit, uh, where all the data will be processed. And uh, in that specific case, the, um, the control interface unit comes with an uh, Ethernet interface. Finally, we provided the customer also with our uh, handheld solutions, so which is nothing else actually than mobile write reading RFID heads for any kind of mobile applications at the customer. Let's have a look in the, four, in the third step of, of our uh, turnkey solution at Fingerhouse, the software development. Um, so the core, the heart, really heart of the, of the um, software development was the server-based database where all the sensor data from our installed hardware uh, will, be, uh, will converge. Um, the customer also is able to use our uh, software solution for the, uh, uh, for the configuration of the installed hardware. And he even uh, are ab is able to define process criteria and check this criteria for plausibility. So that means that the software even allows some sort of intelligence. Yeah, let's have a look at the actual customer, uh, the actual process at, at, at Fingerhouse of our um, solution. First of all, we installed an RFID printer at the customer's place. Um, thanks to the fact that that printer is connected to the ERP system, uh, the printer can print and write at the same time uh, data on the RFID label, such as customer name, project name, or even the component name. And now this label uh, will be attached to the house module, so to the timber, timber frame. And uh, at this point, only the timber frame is tagged at, at Fingerhouse, but uh, they are able to tag any component they want to track in the future. And yeah, now this component is running to the customer's process. And at specific points, as already said, it will be detected by the trigger sensors. The trigger sensors then activates the RFID reading heads and then the RFID head starts to read the information stored on the RFID label or on the RFID tag. That information then will be forwarded um, to the control interface unit and will be processed there. And now you need to imagine that all our control interface units are connected to our uh, server-based database um, where all this data will be converged. Yeah, and now we are able actually to connect these customers, uh, to connect the customer's existing IT uh, to that database. For example, the ERP system for transportation scheduling, for external parts ordering, or even for checking the production status, or the MAS system to provide Fingerhouse workers with, uh, for example, external uh, manufacturing instructions. At this slide, I really would like um, to give you an overview about the process, um, about the solution 
that we installed at Fingerhouse. Let's have a look. In the fourth step, we, um, yeah, we uh, did the installation for the customer, so the installation and commissioning. And uh, last but not least, in the fifth step, we provided him with, uh, with uh, the after sales services like the staff training or even the um, yeah, ongoing technical support. And there are two uh, facts about that project we need uh, to dive in for one second because th these are really real um, key success factors for the customer's project. Um, on the one hand, it's important to know that we developed the solution in such a way that it can be integrated seamlessly into the customer's existing IT architecture. So that a data exchange across all levels of, um, of uh, automation, so really from the field level up to the ERP level, is possible. And the customer now is able to easily expand uh, his RFID system to other production areas if he wants to. Finally, let's have a look on the benefits of Fingerhouse. Um, yeah, the benefits of this project for Fingerhouse. Um, first of all, thanks to our solution, to our RFID solution, Fingerhouse is able to ensure a high level transparency in its intralogistic processes. That, mean, that uh, means that uh, they are now know exactly where their components are located. So no worker needs to look for, for the components anymore. They don't need to search the components anymore. They know now exactly the current status of, of their components and even of their whole houses. They know exactly the efficiency of their intralogistic processes. Um, I actually was talking to uh, one of the guys at, uh, from Fingerhouse a few days ago and he um, was uh, telling me that um, they um, were able to identify a few bottlenecks thanks to our solution and were able to, to optimize that. We also um, ensure ensuring the required delivery excellence of Fingerhouse because now, um, so on the one hand for the uh, internal stakeholders, like for the workers, that they receive the right component at the right workstation in the right condition at the right time on the one hand. And on the other hand, also external stakeholders for example, like the transportation agency, that they can be commissioned just in time. And last but not least, um, Fingerhouse benefits from real one-stop uh, from real one-stop shopping. Um, so they uh, don't need to um, uh, yeah, need to get get in contact, need to stay in contact with many suppliers. Instead of that, they only need to stay in contact with Pebble and Fuchs. And um, that's, of course, lowers the level of complexity for Fingerhouse. It saves cost, and um, yeah, for, uh, for Pebble and Fuchs, um, we are able to achieve an even higher customer satisfaction. That was my presentation. Thank you all for joining. And really looking forward to your questions now. Thanks, Daniel. Um, very thrilling for me, actually, uh, from a, a private point of view, since um, we're currently building a prefabricated okay. house, and <laughs> so, so I can uh, feel this a little. And there, uh, there's one specific question coming to my mind. Um, what is about flexibility for a customer, uh, maybe? So thinking um, about opportunities, for example, if if my house is already in the uh, assembly line, um, the the system maybe for the living room, and I would like to have the window changed uh, uh, afterwards uh, when, when it's not um, yeah, built up um, at all, might that be possible? Yeah. Okay. Pretty good question, actually. Um, yeah. First of all, congratulations <laughs> for your new house. Thanks. <laughs> Pretty cool. Um, yeah. As I already mentioned, um, one of the core things about that project was uh, to install, implement and um, that um, uh, server days database at the, at the customer, mm -hmm. um, um, where all the um, data from the sensor will converge, right? And um, now the customer is able to, co um, to connect this, um, this database uh, to, the, uh, to his IT, like the ERP system, for example, for mm -hmm. external parts ordering. Um, but instead of that, he also could um, implement such a solution that affects you um, directly as an end customer. For example, that you are able 
to choose your preferred windows even after start of production, for example. So if we're having we're talking about a higher level of flexibility, of course. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So so may maybe um, thinking of the, you know there, there's uh, always an appointment. Uh, you you yeah. go to um, to the factory and, yeah, and then yeah. you choose uh, the, the the floor for the bathroom, the living room. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. As I said, windows and, and so on and so on. So maybe this could um, break up into more small. Um, yeah, dates, for example. Yeah, exactly. So we are offering now the customer a large amount of data from the production. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, however, at the end, it's um, it's the customer's decision to what extent sure. he wants yeah. to use the data. But I know uh, the guys of Fingerhouse now a little bit, and I'm pretty sure they have some great ideas in mind. Yeah, okay, yeah. Well, we'll see w where that leads exactly. to. Um, if, if there are other companies uh, or future customers and thinking, well, th this is a, a good approach, uh, m maybe in another way, um, I, I would like to have a solution like that for yeah. me. What to do? What's the approach then? Um, yeah, actually, great question. Um, yeah, of course, first of all, um, they should contact their local sales representative. Um, of course, in the case of Germany, you can also contact me personally mm -hmm. or one of my uh, team colleagues from uh, the new business development team. And uh, then we will, uh, first of all, we will do some initial assessment, right, to know w what is going on. And um, according to that, um, we will put together a team of um, internal experts and um, yeah, they will sit together with the customer and they will listening to the customer in detail. They will even visit your, your site uh, to know uh, in detail what's going on there, what are the challenges uh, he's, fa uh, he's dealing with. And after that, um, of course, according to that outcome, we can provide him with a proof of concept, for example, or e we could even help him to draw specifications. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how that might look like, uh, we're going to talk about that later in our networking lounge with your colleague Branislav. And yeah, um, looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. So this will be in uh, like almost 20 minutes, a little more. And so first of all, thanks, Daniel. It was a very thrilling presentation. And um, we would like to see you then in our networking lounge at 3 p.m. German time. Thank you.